at the time of Creative Growth's beginning, no one could believe where it was going to go. In the early 1970s, people with disabilities normally lived in institutions. The idea that they could be participants in society, the idea that they could be artists that would be in the Museum of Modern Art in New York or in Venice Biennale, that's a phenomenal achievement. Because of the lives they led and because they're challenged in some ways, there is part of their disability that influences their work, but their work transcends their disability. When one path is blocked, others become stronger. The visual information is more focused. What makes an artist great, there's something about the voice, the aesthetic voice. And when you see someone's color palette or someone's patterning and you can recognize that, oh, that can only be one person, that's a very hard thing to achieve. There's probably nothing more poignant that an artist can do than create a world that they give you the privilege of entering into with them. It's the way that they're gonna tell you about their lives. It's the way they're gonna tell you about their story. It's the way they're gonna say, look at me. I'm a person in the world the same as you, and this is what I'm thinking about. This is who I am. That's Creative Growth's mission to understand how everyone is a part of the creative community, and that to understand who we are as artists, to understand who we are as people, isn't that what we all want? The greatest part about the relationship with Method is that they value how our artists can be seen as contemporary designers and how their art can really enrich the everyday experience of people. The transformation of a person marginalized, disenfranchised into being a great artist is phenomenal. <laughs>